What's the word, y'all? Welcome back to the Call Game Recap. Now, y'all know when two teams are playing basketball against each other and neither of them are the Chicago Bulls, I don't really care who wins. I just want good basketball. But today... I'm upset coming into the show because I was excited to talk about the Phoenix Suns being on a, what, six, seven game win streak. They were up by 20 plus, And I'm like, yes, this is the day. I even made a tweet. I can't wait to talk about Dario Sarge. And they proceeded to blow a 20 point game against the bubble Brooklyn Nets plus James Harden. It is inexcusable. And, yes, we will still talk about the Phoenix Suns, uh, but it won't be all positive no more because they let me down today, all right? Shout out to James Harden. Leave a like, subscribe, by the way. Shout out to James Harden. This man took some of the most ballsy shots today, right? Late in the fourth quarter, technically it is a two-for-one opportunity. Typically people don't care about that type of thing, especially in a close game. They're like, you know what? We're going to get our best shot imaginable. We're going to maybe choose some of this clock and get an open shot. Not James Harden. I'm going to shoot a step back in somebody's face, and I'm going to make it. The the, uh, the bulk of this this comeback happened with James Harden on the bench, believe it or not, where it was like Tyler Johnson hitting shots, Landry Shaman hitting shots, and Joe Harris doing his thing, and then you have the closer in James Harden, which is great. The Phoenix Suns, bro, they played a good game. That is crazy to say. They played a good game and lost it because if you ask me, it looks like they took their foot off the gas pedal a little bit. They were just content. You up by 20. You know, you go into fourth quarter. Okay, maybe now you up by 12. They took their foot. Devin Booker didn't really do much for the last three quarters of the game. Chris Paul tried to do everything he could. But this is this is what bothered me the most about this game. I was so excited to come in here and potentially talk about DeAndre Aiden dominating the Brooklyn Nets. Because every single center that the Nets have played against over the last week or so, has the, they let Hassan Whiteside, who was averaging what? 15 minutes a game this whole season, give them 25, 15, and five blocks. He don't even really play like that. So I was like, DeAndre Ayton is for sure getting a 2012 game, and I'm excited to talk about it because he's been solid this season, right? Right? No, he proceeded to not do those things. And you know what? He t he gets some of the blame for it, but I'm not blaming him strictly on this because the Brooklyn Nets did have this idea where whenever he gets the ball, we're going to bring a hard double. And I would say he did a solid job playmaking out of that double. But there were times in this game where it wasn't even just Jeff Green on his back. Instead, it was like Landry Shaman on his back, and nobody got him the ball. Nobody got him the ball. I would want people to get him the ball. He's got that type of mismatch, whatever. Um, I, I do want to talk about DeAndre Aiden for a minute because though the offensive game has, I would say, taken a step back. And, and my biggest criticism for him, pretty much since his rookie season, has been, hopefully y'all, oh, we had a big debate about this on the podcast a couple years ago, oh, or last year, was his lack of aggression in the paint. He's a finesse player at the center position. And there's no, there's nothing wrong with being a finesse player if you could also be like that bruiser type. This man got the shoulders of David Robinson and don't put him into anybody at all. And that you can see that in the field free throw attempts. What center's averaging what one free throw a game? That's playing big time minutes. That is that should be physical. It doesn't really work like that. And him being able to draw fouls later in his career is gonna what what be what can elevate his offensive game. Because right now, honestly, he's still trying to figure it out with Chris Paul, and they have been better in this win streak. That was one of the things I was excited to talk about. They this their connection has been growing a bit, but he's still has not progressed that much offensively since his rookie season, which is the exact opposite of what his defense has done. His defense, his rookie season was atrocious. And people are like, man, this was a bad pick. And and I'm talking about like beat writers and, and people like that. Not that it was a bad pick, but like, will he ever be able to? Because the center position, it seems like it's a position that defensively either you, you got it or you don't. And DeAndre Aiden wasn't showing signs that he would ever get it his rookie season. But here we are in year number three. He's getting it. Now, if you've never watched him play before and this is your first experience of DeAndre Aiden, you will not be able to tell that he's been an approved defender <laughs> because they struggle today. And you know what? Nobody has this answer. I'm not blaming Monty Williams because there's not a single coach in the league that has figured out completely how to guard James Harden. Do you switch it? Do you have do you try to keep it you keep it clean? Do you ice it? Nobody knows. He might be the best pick and roll player ever. So, yes, you don't really figure it out. But today they decided we're going to switch it. And DeAndre Ayton's not a bad perimeter defender, but he's going against one of the greatest of all time. So he got taken advantage of. And then late in this game, you could tell he was fatigued because he got taken advantage of by Jeff Green off the dribble. So I'm like, yeah, maybe put Dario in the game so we could talk about him a little bit more. But overall, uh, Brooklyn Nets, big time win, man. Big time win on the game that they probably shouldn't have won. Um, I was excited because Chris Paul, my boy CP, was doing some big things here. And they, they didn't close it out. Uh, Devin Booker wasn't very good, especially in that second half. First quarter, 
dominating, <laughs> dominating. Um, but in that second half, not so much. Not not a great win. Not a great loss. I hope that the Suns end up going on another win streak so I can talk positive about them because they, there are some things that they are doing that I, I am a big fan of. Um, but I can't I can't come in here and rave about the Phoenix Suns the day that they blew a 20 point lead. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Brooklyn Nets, big time win. On the back to back, by the way. Next game, or the first game of the day, was the Nuggets going against the Celtics and the Celtics taking this win. One of the guys said this on Twitter, and I wholeheartedly agree. I haven't even thought about this this way, but I'm so happy I saw that tweet that I wish I can give credit to. Somebody said, if Nikola Jokic is putting up 40, you're probably losing that game. Now, it's not the same for, like, LeBron, Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, James Harden, because these guys are, like, natural-born scorers. That's their number one priority. At the root of all things for Nikola Jokic, he is a playmaker. So whenever he's like, oh, I guess I got to do it myself, is the games where you know that his surrounding cast ain't doing a damn thing. And today, I don't care. I do not care. They ended up with 25 points. Jamal Murray was bad. For a guy that's a point guard that doesn't have the ball in his hands to play make, nine turnovers is inexcusable. Got to give a lot of credit to the Boston Celtics tonight. But, like, I don't know what the record would say. Because there's been a lot of games this season where he's put up, like, 40-plus. I know he had the big one against the Jazz where they ended up winning. But he had, like, a 50-pointer, like, a week ago and ended up losing because anytime he has to take all of the shots and not really showing off his playmaking and all the other things, it's probably the day that Michael Porter Jr. doesn't do a thing. Now, slight pass because they are still missing so many players. But I didn't really get to talk about them much against that Laker, uh, the Lakers game. Uh, Zeke is, has been really, really solid uh, for a guy that wasn't really in a rotation much. I mean, he had to guard LeBron. You know what I'm saying? The other night, he had to guard LeBron. He did an okay job at it. They're still missing a lot because uh, Compazzo is starting. RJ was getting early first quarter minutes. I was like, you know what? Yeah, they 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 could use some help. But Bobo, DNP coach's decision when the team is missing players. I don't know. I don't know. Bobo may not be everything y'all wanted them to be. The Boston Celtics, a uh, big, big bounce back game here um, to see Aaron e. Smith, to see Time Lord, see Peyton Pritchard, all these younger guys getting minutes and doing solid things. It dramatically changes what this team can be. I don't know if I can trust this long term um, <laughs> because they are all so young, right? Investing in these three guys off your bench when they're all like year one, year two, year three players is kind of kind of questionable. But a win nonetheless um, in a game where JB and JT did their thing. Next game is the first nasty televised game where the Pelicans for what is it, the fourth time, have beat the the um, the Memphis Grizzlies. Zion, last time we talked about the Pelicans, we were talking about how Zion attempted 11 shots in the first half then attempted three shots in the second half on the other uh, nationally televised game because they're always on TV. And that was inexcusable, right? Today, they tried to remedy that a little bit by allowing Zion Williamson to be point Zion. And it helped a little bit, but he still only ended with 16 shot attempts. Zion, just do it. Just I know it's not really in your character right now. I would take all the shots, bro. The man is a 2K cheat code. He's a demigod. You cannot guard him, bro. He was literally bodying Valanciunas, who... Is breaking Valentunas is breaking people's body parts if you do if you know. Um, and he was just bodying them, you know, just bodying them at the end of the day. The Memphis Grizzlies just don't come to play against the Pelicans, or maybe it's just the Pelicans do elevate their play a little bit. But it's good to see John ja Morant have a bounce back because since he's been back from his injury, he hasn't been stellar today. I would say he's been that. Um, so a good win for the Pels, where where you know Zion did his thing. Oh, he had a three. Josh Hart is the is. The, the smallest power – how do they have two of the smallest power forwards in the league? I don't know. But that man gets all of the boards. And it's strictly based off effort at the end of the day. It's just based off effort. Next game, the Raptors get a win against the Bucks. I hope that we find out that Kyle Lowry is cool because when he left in this game, I was I was pretty sure that they were going to lose this game. Um, But you know why they won? Because OG Ananobi was back. And OG Ananobi is so, so good at what he does. Like, you know he's going to give it all defensively. He's going to be great defensively. But when you get those games where he's also contributing offensively and he continues to do that more and more every single time he plays, it's a GG. When Freddie is on, Freddie is on, and he's on. He, it's fun to watch. For the Bucks, this is their biggest losing streak over the past couple years, I don't have much. Brickle Lopez is not good. Chris Middleton is in a slump. Drew Holiday is out with the virus. You know, it's a lot. Coach Bud can't coach. <laughs> it's a lot going on with them. But I feel like every time they do lose, I come out here and I talk trash. Those are the big things. Brick Lopez, I was I, I was praising Brick Lopez because. Over the past couple years, he has reinvented himself from a guy that was back to the basket, low post, one of the best in the league, to be like, I know where the game is going, so I'm going to re re reach. I'm going to change myself, right? He became Splash Mountain, and over this season, yeah, he might have 
he might be going down the mountain if you know if you know what I mean. Uh, the Lakers get a win on, against the Timberwolves, but I don't really care. I don't care about the Lakers part. LeBron, great MVP performance. Dennis Schroeder, great performance. I want to talk about. The Minnesota Timberwolves. Okay, can we talk about Anthony Edwards? We always talk about on this show how LaMelo Ball continues to get better and better every single game. The same can be said about Anthony Edwards. We're going to continue to compare these two players throughout the career because I do believe that both of them will turn out to be pretty good players and stars in their own right. But man, 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 Anthony Edwards today was amazing. And you know why I like Anthony Edwards? Similar to why I like John Morant. That man is just so happy to play basketball. John Moran could be down by 20, and he'll be smiling because he just loves the game of basketball. Anthony Edwards is the same way. Like, there's the one that went viral on, like, House of Highlights and stuff, where he hit a shot on LeBron's face, and he smiled because you know this 20-year-old just hit a shot on a guy that he watched grow up, probably his favorite player of all time because LeBron ends up being everybody's favorite player in some way. Like, those are the type of things I really like. And, and not even just the personality. Today, he was amazing. He kept them into this game. He legitimately had portions of the game where he was taking over on the fourth, you know? And somebody tweeted at me like, Kenny, I don't know if you watched the game. Can you explain to me why Carl Anthony Towns only took 10 shot attempts? And I would, I would guess that this has to do with conditioning after the virus. Same thing when Jason Tatum said earlier today, where, like, his lungs ain't the same right now. And Carl Anthony Towns is fresh off of this stuff. So him taking 10 shots, I mean, yes, it would help if he took more today. But I'm giving Carl Anthony Towns his little pass over the next couple weeks because I know how bad this virus can be from some people. And he even came out of his own experience and said that the virus really kicked his ass. So um, he might just not be all there with the lung capacity and everything. He did seem kind of drained in this one. I'm, I'm cool with it. You know, he didn't have a bad game. He just didn't shoot the ball as many times you wanted him to. Damian Lillard, oh, my God. So the fact that this team – it's still like the second or third worst defense in the league, but they continue to win games. It's just a testament to how great Damian Lillard is. We talked about this a couple episodes ago, but like his clutch performance numbers are ridiculous. The greatest in the league by far. It's not even close. And they they were blowing this lead to OKC. This is what you call a, a good loss for OKC because they want to lose games anyway. Uh, OKC has this big old comeback. And then Damian Lillard, who has struggled with from the three for the first I don't know, three and a half quarters decided to hit four straight threes in the clutch. This, like, Dame time is a real thing. It is, it's 2K-like, like his grand badge is on, and you can't do anything to guard it because Lou Dort, all game, great defensive plays, great defensive possessions, but great offense beats great defense 100% of the time, and Damian Lillard is the definition of great offense offense I am so impressed with the way this team has stayed afloat now I did just mention how they're still like the second to third worst defense in the entire league so I don't know how long they'll be able to stay at this portion without them defending anything but right now with Dane playing the way he is it is great Lou Dort like I said defensively he was great offensively he was great too is that it I got to every game wow that's every game if you enjoyed the video, leave it a like. Let me know what you think um, about some of the takes I had. Again, you can disagree. That's completely cool. Um, before we go, quick PSA. I just try to talk about things that I find interesting. Um, I get a lot of tweets and stuff on Instagram. People like, Kenny, can you please talk about my team? And typically, I will talk about your team eventually. That's just the way that I watch too much basketball not to, to watch your team eventually. But I also just want to have fun here. You know what I'm saying? So please just... I, I never said this is going to be a daily show, so people be tweeting me, Kenny, where's the show? Where's the show? This is not anything daily. I just like to do it when I can. You know what I'm saying? So keep those things in mind. I appreciate every single one of you, and I'll see y'all soon. I'm out. Call game.